Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Healthspan. We recently had the pleasure of talking with Professor Hayne Cohen from Bar Ilan University, who is a leading researcher on Sirtuin 6. The audio on the interview was not always that clear, and we have had requests for a summary. In this video, I have done my best to summarize the key points made by Professor Cohen. I've not added any commentary, but this is ultimately my interpretation of what Professor Cohen said. And if in doubt, please refer to the original interview. Each slide has the thumbnail of the relevant video in the top right for your reference. First, a disclaimer. In this video, we are summarizing an interview from Professor Cohen. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Professor Cohen decided to study the Sirtuins as they appeared to be related to aging based on studies in yeast. Within the Sirtuins, he chose Sirt6 because it is in the nucleus and is involved in DNA repair, two areas that he knew about and found interesting. Calorie restriction has been shown to extend lifespan in many model organisms, including yeast, worms, and flies. The sirtuins are related to calorie restriction and how this works to extend lifespan. If the sirtuins are removed from the model organism, calorie restriction fails to increase lifespan. Also, the expression of SIRT6 is raised during calorie restriction. Whether the mechanism of action of CR is through SIRT6 in mammals is difficult to show, as mammals with SIRT6 deleted will die before birth or shortly afterwards. However, Professor Cohen's team did see that the same set of genes was activated in both CR and SIRT6 overexpression, so he believes that they are related. What is the function of SIRT6? SIRT6 is a deacetylase, which is to say an enzyme which removes acetyl groups from proteins. Adding or removing acetyl groups can have a profound effect on the actions of a protein, and this is how SIRT6 regulates activity. Through this process, SIRT6 regulates processes, many of which are important for metabolism. Example of these are where it downregulates glucose metabolisms and helps counter the Warburg effect. The Warburg effect is the tendency for cancer cells to use more glucose than other cells because of the pathway that they use to generate energy. So SIRT6 is acting as a cancer suppressor in this case. SIRT6 also downregulates the generation of triglycerides and cholesterol in the liver and promotes fat burning through the process of beta oxidation. This last point is important because burning fat is how we generate energy when glucose levels are low. Burning fat provides energy at these times, such as during fasting or when we get older. Dr. Cohen talked about the experiment that he and his team have been conducting on SIRT6 since before 2012. For this, he used mice which overexpressed SIRT6, called Moses mice, for mice overexpressing exogenous SIRT6. In the earlier studies, they showed that mice fed a high-fat diet, became obese, and suffered the typical symptoms of metabolic syndrome, such as type 2 diabetes, inflammation, high triglycerides, etc. In Moses mice on the same diet, the mice did not develop these symptoms. The reason that this is exciting is because these same symptoms occur as we age. We become fatter, develop type 2 diabetes, become inflamed, and our triglycerides increase. By reversing this, SIRT6 can help reduce the signs of aging. This led to the next experiment, where they fed the Moses mice in a normal diet. Here they saw that the average lifespan of males was extended by 27%, and that of females by 15%. Health span is also important, and they saw that this was also extended. The mice did not develop type 2 diabetes, had more youthful blood markers, and a delayed onset of cancer. The mites were also less frail. They ran further, both by choice and when forced, doing as well as young mice. How does SIRT6 do this? By regulating energy metabolism during times of stress. When fasting, our glucose levels go down. As we get older, we are less able to recover these through gluconeogenesis. SIRT6 enables this process, like in younger mice, they showed that SIRT6 used lactate from muscles and free fatty acids from fat tissue to generate the glucose. More generally, SIRT6 reversed all of the changes in the liver which occur with aging, 
So it is recovering the energy homeostasis. Cert 6 overactivation also increased the amount of NAD. Why did Cert 6 have a bigger impact on males than females? Cert 6 lowers insulin like growth factor 1, and lower IGF 1 levels are correlated with longer lifespan. However, females have less IGF 1 to start with, and so the impact is less. This does not explain the entire difference, and there was some further mechanism in action which was not identified. In the paper, they also tried a mouse in which only the liver would overexpress at 6. In this case, the gluconeogenesis effects were muted. This was because the process needs fuel, lactate from muscles, and free fatty acids from the adipose tissue. So CERT6 needs to be overexpressed there as well for the full effect. Professor Cohen did say that it would still have many benefits if only expressed in the liver, such as improving LDL to HDL ratio, lowering triglycerides, and promoting fat burning in the liver. We discussed the fact that in transgenic mice, CERT6 would be overexpressed from birth, well, actually from before birth, and whether it would still be effective if delivered later in life. Based on unpublished results, it would be. In terms of cognitive ability, they saw that long-term memory was improved, as shown by the mice navigating the Morris water maze. He felt that code quality was improved, but it was not significant and not a major area of research for them. It is possible to tell Moses mice from the controls just from the amount of activity. He did not test the mice with an epigenetic clock. How much were the mice overexpressing CERT6? They created nine separate lines of mice, which overexpressed CERT6 from two times to between four and five times. All of the variants saw improvements, and it did increase with the level of CERT6 overexpression but he did not have the data to show it was in a linear, dose-dependent manner. What other ways are there to activate CERT6 if we are not transgenic? Being lean is one way. Based on tests in humans, a higher BMI and metabolic syndrome is correlated with lower CERT6. Exercise did not increase the expression of CERT6, but it did make it more effective. The small molecules which have been shown to increase CERT6, not many have been tested in humans. Professor Cohen has started a company called CERTILAB, which is currently conducting preclinical trials on CERT6 activators. The next step is a phase one human trial, which he hopes will happen in a year or so. Certain algae have been shown to also raise CERT6, but it is not clear how effective this would be in vivo. Raising NAD via NMN or NR may help. However, CERT6 has a high affinity for NAD and will find NAD even if it's in low concentration. So it's not clear how much raising NAD will help. We then discussed Professor Cohen's theory of aging. Aging is not evolved because in the wild, almost no animals age. The average lifespan is about 30% of a total lifespan. For example, in the field, a mouse will live six or seven months. In the lab, they can live two years. This means that processes which are effective when we are young continue and lead to ill effects later in life. mTOR is an example of this. It also means that DNA repair mechanisms are calibrated for 30% of the lifespan, so for humans, 20 to 30 years, rather than the 80 years that we are now living. This is one of the reasons activating CERT6 can help, as it is related to DNA repair. CERT6 did not evolve to support older individuals, but to provide energy during periods of stress, such as fasting. We then discussed what does Professor Cohen see as the most promising technologies. He thinks CERT6 activators will help, though he did caution that this is probably because it is the one he is close to. He also likes analytics, but he sees big data and AI as making the biggest difference. Thank you for your attention. I hope that you found this summary useful.